Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we are diving into the fascinating world of AM radios. AM communication and AM radios are predecessors to modern 4G and 5G mobile communication and might seem like a relic of the past. But AM communication still holds significant importance today. From emergency broadcasts to talk radio, AM radio remains a robust and reliable form of communication. Its simplicity and effectiveness ensures that even in remote areas or during power outages, vital information can be transmitted and received. Before we delve into the specifics of AM, let's quickly recap the basic of electromagnetic waves and modulation. Electromagnetic waves are oscillations of electric and magnetic fields that propagate through space. They are a fundamental mechanism by which information is transmitted in today's world. To transmit electrical information through electromagnetic waves, we need antennas to transmit electromagnetic radiations in free space. However, the size of the antenna is proportional to the wavelength of electromagnetic waves being transmitted. Therefore, it becomes impractical to transmit audio signals directly as electromagnetic waves because at audio frequencies, the antenna would need to be extremely large. For example, a quarter wavelength antenna size for 20 Hz audio signal will be 7500 km long. To overcome this, the audio signal is superimposed onto a high frequency carrier wave, which is then transmitted. This process of embedding a low frequency information signal onto a high frequency carrier is called modulation. In the example shown, the superimposed audio signal changes the amplitude of the carrier signal. Therefore, this kind of modulation is known as amplitude modulation. With an understanding of modulation in mind, the next step is to explore the overall AM radio transmission setup. The process begins at radio station, where a microphone converts sound waves from humans into electrical signals. These signals are then processed by an AM transmitter and sent to an AM broadcast antenna. Here the electrical signals are modulated onto a carrier frequency and then radiated as electromagnetic waves that travel through air at the speed of light. The size of AM broadcast antenna is quite large due to the AM broadcast frequency range of 540 to 1600 kHz, which typically requires antennas to be approximately between 50 and 140 meters in length that corresponds to a quarter wavelength antenna size. These electromagnetic waves can travel long distances bouncing off the ionosphere, especially at night, allowing AM signals to be received far from the original transmission site. Now let's move to your home. When you tune your AM radio to a specific frequency, the radio tuner selects the corresponding carrier frequency of the station you want to listen. Inside the AM radio receiver, the antenna picks up the desired signal, processes it, and then converts it back to audio signal using built-in speakers. The receiver antenna is generally much smaller than the transmitting antenna due to practical size constraints. While the small antenna reduces the reception efficiency compared to ideal quarter wavelength antenna size, it still allows for acceptable audio reception. Now let's explore this further by understanding what happens to audio signals inside AM transmitters and receivers. Let's first start with the internal structure of an AM transmitter. Whether it is a high power AM transmitter in radio stations or a hobbyist AM transmitter, the main building blocks of an AM transmitter are as follows. First, microphone. It converts sound into an electrical signal. The signal then goes to an audio amplifier which boosts the audio signal strength. Then there is an oscillator which generates a high frequency carrier signal. The carrier signal gets modulated with an audio signal with the help of a modulator circuit which combines the audio signal and the carrier signal varying the carrier amplitude. This modulated signal 
goes to the power amplifier which increases the power of modulated signal for transmission and finally send it to an antenna for propagation through air. The exact implementation of an AM transmitter varies depending on the requirements and can vary widely in circuit design. Nevertheless, a simple AM transmitter radio example is presented here. The circuit has two parts, an audio amplifier and a radio frequency oscillator. The oscillator is built around transistor Q2 and related components. The tank circuit with an inductance L0 and capacitance C4 is tunable to control AM transmission frequency from 540 to 1600 kHz. There is a regenerative feedback loop in the oscillator formed by the capacitor C3 that couples signals from the base to the top of L0 and C6 capacitance ensures that the oscillation is transferred from the collector to the emitter and through the internal base emitter resistance of the transistor Q2 back to the base again. The resistor R7 ensures that the oscillation will not be shunted to ground through a very low value internal emitter resistance. Q1 is wired as a common emitter RF amplifier where C2 decouples the emitter resistance and unleashes the full gain of this stage. The microphone can be a condenser microphone and the amount of AM modulation can be adjusted by the variable resistance R5. For further details about this circuit, we refer viewers to the references in the description of this video. Now let's switch gear and look at the AM receiver, particularly focusing on the superheterodyne receiver, which is amongst the most common types used in AM radios. A superheterodyne receiver is a type of a radio receiver that uses frequency mixing to convert the received signal to a fixed intermediate frequency. When we open a superheterodyne AM radio, it will mainly consist of following blocks. First, an RF filter. It filters out unwanted frequencies and passes only the desired channel. Local oscillator. The second block is the local oscillator. The frequency of a local oscillator is set so that either the sum or the difference of RF signal frequency and the LO frequency is equal to the IEF used in the receiver, usually around 455 kHz. Mixer. The RF signal and the LO signal are fed to the mixer to produce the desired IF. IF filter. A resonant circuit placed in the collector of the mixer transistor with the resonant frequency equal to the IF frequency. Its purpose is to filter off all signals with a frequency different from the IF frequency. IF amplifier. It amplifies the IF signal. Gains of 50 to 100 in each IF stage are common. The amplifier is controlled by an automatic gain control voltage from the demodulator. An automatic gain control either increases or decreases the gain of the stage causing the output signal to be roughly the same regardless of the input signal amplitude. Detector it demodulates AM by rectifying the intermediate frequency. Audio amplifier. It amplifies the audio signal and passes it on to the speaker. Between the detector and the audio amplifier, a volume control potentiometer is used. Speaker. It outputs audio to the user. The benefits of superheterodyne receiver are many. First, it allows transmission at higher frequencies, leading to smaller and more practical antenna dimensions. Second, it converts high-frequency electromagnetic waves to a low-intermediate frequency IF, simplifying the circuit design of later stages as it is easier to design tune amplifier for a fixed low-frequency signal. Third. It allows easy tuning of multiple frequency bands, making it a cheaper implementation of a single radio receiver that can receive multiple AM frequency channels. The last point requires further explanation, 
and for that it's good to briefly study the AM communication frequency spectrum. The AM radio frequency range lie from 535 to 1605 kilohertz with a channel spacing of 10 kilohertz. This means that the carrier frequencies of each channel vary from 540 to 1600 kilohertz with a spacing of 10 kilohertz. In the early days of AM communication and before the invention of a superheterodyne radio, the whole receiver chain had to be tuned to one particular AM channel frequency. This meant that changing to different channels required tuning of multiple stages, making it a costly and a cumbersome process. In a superheterodyne radio, receiving a different frequency channel is achieved by changing the yellow frequency. No matter what channel frequency is, the intermediate frequency of a superheterodyne receiver remains the same, for example, at 455 kHz. Therefore, intermediate frequency amplifiers need to be designed for only one frequency, greatly simplifying the receiver design. Depending on the product specifications, superheterodyne receiver blocks can be designed in many different ways. Nevertheless, for basic understanding, we will show one implementation here. The shown circuit might appear complicated at first, but if we compare it with the block diagram we learned earlier, it becomes simple. So let's split each section of a circuit to explain its working. Antenna and mixer. Over here, L1 serves as a ferrite rod antenna, creating a resonant circuit with variable capacitors C21 and C11 in parallel. The secondary winding of L1 connects to the base of a mixer transistor Q1. The local oscillator signal is fed into the emitter via capacitor C5. The IF output is extracted from the collector through the transformer T1 which also functions as the first IF filter stage. Armstrong oscillator. Here C12 is tuned together with C11 to maintain a consistent 455 kHz difference between LO and RF frequencies. This is typically achieved using ganged capacitors that adjust their values simultaneously. The yellow frequency is set by L2 and the combined capacitance of C12 and C22 in series with C8. L2 also provides feedback for oscillations from the collector to the emitter, with the base grounded for RF through C7. First IF amplifier. This stage includes the transistor amplifier Q2. The output of first IF filter, transformer T1, is connected to the base of Q2 transistor in the IF amplifier. The output of first IF amplifier connects to the second IF amplifier stage through transformer T2. Second IF amplifier. This stage consists of transistor amplifier Q3. The bias is stabilized by R10 and R11 with C15 grounding the base for IF signals. R12 provides a negative feedback, reducing distortion. All other aspects are similar to the first amplifier. Detector The detector demodulates the IF signal using germanium diodes, chosen for their low forward voltage compared to silicon diodes. R13, C18, and C19 create a pi topology low-pass audio filter, while R7 adjusts automatic gain control strength and forms a low-pass filter with C10. Audio preamplifier Q4 acts as an audio preamplifier. R34 controls the volume and C22 provides a negative feedback at higher frequencies, offering additional low-pass filtering. Q5 drives the power stage. Audio power amplifier. T3 inverts the phase of signals at the base of Q7 relative to the phase at the base of Q6. T4 converts the half-wave currents of each transistor 
back into a complete waveform and matches the high impedance of the transistor amplifier to the low impedance of the speaker. R26 and C29 provides a negative feedback, reducing distortion and enhancing audio quality and frequency response. For further details about this circuit, we refer viewers to the references in the description of this video. This concludes our explanation of superheterodyne radios. Please note that there can be a lot of variations of these circuits in the market, but they are based on the same principle as explained earlier. In conclusion, we started by learning about electromagnetic waves, modulation and types of modulation before delving into amplitude modulation, the building block of an AM transmitter and finally the superheterodyne AM receiver. It is evident that AM communication is still relevant today and serves as an important role in our communication systems. We hope that this video has provided you with a clear understanding of how AM radio works. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about our future videos. Don't forget to share your thoughts or ask any questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more exciting content.